Nature was my first teacher. I learned so much just by opening my eyes, by listening, by taking myself away from distractions and by just being curious. It does ask you to slow down though, to be present and to tune into your senses. What do I see? What do I hear? What do I smell? What does it feel like? And how does it taste? A naturalist is an expert or a student of nature, someone who is always curious about their natural world and how it works. And you don't need much to begin, just your senses, your naturalist journal, and your curiosity, and we'll provide the rest. This is Fairyland Flora and Fauna. I see you found some of my friends. Oh, hi, Miss Jasmine. Hi, Miss Michaela. So these are not actually plants. These are mushrooms. But they're growing in the ground. How could they not be plants? Well, they're a completely different organism that has a unique lifestyle and a lot of different cool characters. Miss Jasmine, do you mind teaching me a little bit about mushrooms? Absolutely. Let's go find some. Naturalists, welcome back to another episode of Fairyland Flora and Fauna. We are super excited to have a special friend, Miss Jasmine, who is a mushroom expert. Thanks for being here today. Absolutely, super fun. So uh, what are we looking at right here? Well, we have a lot of different types of mushrooms to learn about and explore today. So we have some that look probably pretty familiar to anybody that knows what a mushroom is and some that are a little bit more strange and I'd love to teach you about them. Awesome. So we've learned that they're not plants. No, they are not. That they're their own different type of organism. So while they're all related, you'll see that some of them look pretty unique. So here are some that don't look like the traditional mushroom shape that you might think of. But when we look at our familiar little mushroom, there's a few characteristics that we can point out and identify in other mushrooms that you might find in nature. Awesome. So if we're looking at this one, what are some parts that we might want to keep in mind? The first thing that you'll notice about a mushroom is the cap. So this is the big umbrella shape, just like what I have here, that holds all of the spores underneath. So under the cap, you'll see the gills. And sometimes gills can look long and skinny like this. Sometimes they're little holes too. Whoa. And in some species of mushrooms, they can even look like teeth. And those are underneath the cap, right? Yes. Now, what about this long stem-like thing? Ah, so you might be tempted to call it a stem. We actually call this a stipe. A stipe. Yeah, so the stipe will elevate the mushroom above the soil so that when it's ready to spread its spores, it has lots of space to do it. What about this little thing that's right here? What's that? So this is a new term. This is called an annulus. Annulus. And what's that? So an annulus is a little protective layer that will actually attach to the gills of the mushroom when it's really young oh. to protect the gills before they're ready to make their spores. Wow, hang on, I think I have a young mushroom. We can look at that. Ah, yes. So here you can see that the mushroom actually still has its annulus attached to the edge of its cap. Yeah. Okay, so we have our stipe, our annulus, our gills, which are inside that, right? Mm -hmm. And then the cap, which protects the whole structure. Beautiful. Now, not all mushrooms have these parts, but they do share many of them in common. So this structure here on this turkey tail mushroom is very similar to the cap that we see here. I see. But they look really different. It actually will grow into its food oh. and will create more of itself in a little bit of a different way. 
I see. One of the most important jobs that a mushroom has is decomposition. So mushrooms grow out of the food that the fungus eats. Okay. And the fungus likes to go into the soil or into places where there's lots of fallen leaves and branches okay. and eat all of that decaying matter. Oh. And it uses the energy from that decaying matter to make these mushrooms. So a little bit different from plants, but both are getting an energy source and then growing and reproducing. You got it. Naturalists, we have a very exciting activity to do today. Our friend and guest, Jasmine, is going to be taking us on a mushroom hunt, but she's going to let us know a little bit about the rules about that first. Yes. So it's very important that we never, ever eat any mushrooms that we find in the environment. Some mushrooms can actually make you pretty sick. And so we want to make sure that we're just here to pick observe, record our notes in our field notes, um, and never eating any mushrooms. Also, it'd be a good idea to wash your hands after picking any mushrooms. Mm -hmm. Is there anything special that you should wear or carry with you while you're foraging? Absolutely. So you always want to make sure that you have good, solid shoes for hiking. Mushrooms like to grow in really muddy places or places with lots of twigs and branches. So you want to have on hiking boots or shoes that you're not afraid of getting wet and you know that your feet will be safe inside. It's also very important to make sure that you have sunscreen or a hat on because you'll spend lots of time looking in the dirt and looking for mushrooms. And it's good to keep yourself nice and safe. And if you have your naturalist journal with you, it's a good idea to bring a pencil, any kind of color pencils, if you want to get really detailed with your drawing. Mm -hmm. And if you want to, you can even take a magnifying glass Ooh. so that you can see some of the little details that are present on certain types of mushrooms. Great tip, Jasmine. Mm -hmm. I'm ready to get started. Let's do it. Awesome. All right, Miss Jasmine, we're looking for mushrooms now, right? Yes, we and where, are. And where would we look for them? So mushrooms are usually pretty short, so we have to keep our eyes on the ground. And the best place to find mushrooms is any area that has lots of moisture. So this oh, is wow. a lovely cluster of mushrooms that we see growing under this fern. And you can see that the soil is very moist when you pinch it. So there's lots of water present in the soil for the mushrooms to use to grow. And you can also see that they're growing in the shade of the fern. So the shade of the fern will protect it from drying out in the sun. So how would I harvest one of these mushrooms? Like what's the best way to go about doing that? We actually have to find the very base of the mushrooms and then dig up a little bit of what they're growing in because it'll tell us lots of important information about the mushroom itself, how it lives, and what it eats. Oh, wow. And so these mushrooms are actually part of a bigger organism that is eating all of this dead and decaying matter in the soil, like these twigs and branches and leaves that fall naturally. So the organism itself is underneath the soil. It is, wow. Yeah. So this is only a small part of the fungus. The major part of the fungus is growing underneath and it's absorbing all of these nutrients in the soil to produce these beautiful little mushrooms that we see above the ground. So now that we have our mushroom specimen, mm -hmm. uh, should we take a crack at our field notes? Absolutely. You wanna show us how to do that? No problem. So it's very important to take field notes anytime you want to observe and learn about a mushroom we want to take some observations. The way we do that is we look at the shape, the size, the color of the mushroom, and other qualities that it has to help us learn a little bit more about it. Look at what is growing in the soil. So we have these little cones here. We have lots of leaves and wood. So it's very important that we write down all of these details that we can when we take our field notes. I'm ready to get started.
fuzzy on top. Look at that. It's kind of like a lacy, fuzzy cloud. Whoa, what are those guys? Miss M, these are so cool. These are actually called Earth Stars. So this is a type of mushroom that looks very different from the other mushrooms we've seen today. And they have a very special feature. This little bulb on top, when you poof it, makes spores. So these little guys are growing on this dead log. And they oh. have some really beautiful colors, don't they, Miss M? They're gorgeous. What kind of mushrooms are these? So these are turkey tails. And they're called turkey tails because of the beautiful patterns that you can see on the top of the mushroom. Well, that was so much fun. Oh, I know. Should we take a look and see what we found? Yes, we got lots of cool stuff to look at. Oh, wow. Okay. So we have a very unique opportunity to see the same species of mushroom at different stages in its life cycle. Oh, wow. So this is a very young mm -hmm. mushroom. And then this is what it would look like when it got older. Yeah, so when we are making our spore print, it's gonna be important that we choose a mushroom that is not too old and one that has its gills available for the spore print. Well, naturalists, we're ready to move on to the next stage of our activity, which is our mushroom observation and spore print. So next to this video on the magic tree, you will find both your field notes and you'll find this special sheet where you will be able to take your spore print. All right, Jasmine, you wanna teach us how we're gonna do this? Absolutely. Right. So the first thing that we're going to do is just draw a quick picture of this mushroom here that we're going to use. All right. So a few things you wanna focus on, and you'll see that there's a diagram on your worksheet to help you, are some of those key characters that we talked about. So you wanna to try to draw your cap, your stipe, and any other small little characters that you can notice to help us learn more about this mushroom. All right, so I am looking and I'm noticing the shape of the mushroom. And I'm noticing it's got like a little bit of a knob on the top of its cap. So you want to try to draw your mushroom at different angles, maybe from the cap, mm. maybe from the gills, so you get all the characteristics that you've observed in your drawing. All right, so once we have our drawing done, what should we do next? Well, now we can begin to make our spore print. Awesome! So the first thing that we wanna do is find our mushroom that is the best candidate for making a spore print. So this one has its gills available for our spore print and it's not super old. So we know that there are still spores held in those gills. Oh, wow. So the first thing you wanna do is very carefully remove the stipe from the cap. So the best thing to do is to grab the stipe close to the cap as you can, and then just give it a little wiggle, maybe a little twist, and that should just come right off. Okay, now we can actually begin the process of making our spore print. So I have my worksheet with my drawings here, and what I'm gonna do is locate this little circle that we've drawn for you just so that it is centered on the page and we can observe as many spores as we can. So now I'm gonna place our mushroom cap gill side down onto this paper. Gill side down, everyone. Very important. So now that we've positioned our mushroom cap, we're gonna need to protect it while it makes its spore print. I've got something for that. So this will basically protect the mushroom while it makes its spores and keep it in a good environment to do what it needs to do. Now, uh, how long do we wait? Well, now, this is sometimes the hard part when you're making spore prints. For the best results, you're gonna wanna give it 24 hours to a dump out all its spores. Day. But the spores have to have a chance to fall down and the longer you wait, the more bright and vibrant your spore print will be. So this <gasps> is what your spore print will look like when it's done. And so this print, all of this brown right here, those are all spores. They're all spores. Yeah, so a single mushroom can make millions of spores. Oh. Well, naturalists, I hope you have a lot of luck on your foraging. Remember, none of those mushrooms go in your mouth. 
and good luck with your spore print and all of your field guide notes. We'll see you next time. Jasmine, thanks for joining me today. Of course. Right, folks. Have a good one and see you next time. <laughs>